All right, so I don't know if you've heard of the game that's like kind of breaking Steam right now, <laughs> but it's called Banana. It's free. It's not paid. You could go play it right now. Let me just play the video, okay? Let me just play the video so that you see how amazing and well-made this game is, okay? <laughs> the NVIDIA <laughs> notification on the top screen. You click on the banana and you get more bananas. What do you do with those bananas? Nothing. Can you buy skins? No, you can't. Do you get more bananas? No, you don't. Every three hours, you get like a skin. Uh, it doesn't matter how much bananas you have. You just get the skin no matter what. Uh, you can sell them for 35 cents. One skin was sold for like, for like $400 or something. Psychological horror. And at one point, this game was, I think, the most played game on Steam. And so, you know, as always, a lot of people are complaining like, Oh, but this game takes no effort. Uh, and they're making money from it. How is that fair? Okay, then why didn't you make it? The meta right now is just these stupid, <laughs> easy to make, ab absurd games. And I know that this is the meta because there's like other games very similar to this that recently came out and they're also getting a lot of players. And so I wanted to see, I uh, just show you how easy this is to make, okay? So if you're right now struggling with money, if you have like a family of four to feed and you're, you know, barely getting through, just make a banana game, bro, right? Let's right now, Roblox Studio is free. All of this is free. Let's just make the game right now. So let's just make the background right now, okay? Screen GUI, frame, that's it. There we go, there's our frame. Obviously we have to, you know, scale it up to fit the screen. That's it, it's white now. You know what, you know what's the only thing that we have to do? We have to change the color. What's the color? Like this, I don't know. I'm, I'm remaking the banana game, bro. I don't care, you could make your own game. You could make a, a lime if you want, <laughs> or you could make um blueberry. You could make blueberry, right? Or you could make um dragon fruit. I think dragon fruit would be pretty cool. All right, there you go. There's our background. Um, and then also set ignore GUI inset to be um, true. Because you know what happens when it's false? Do you know how it's going to look? It's going to leave space for buttons, which just looks bad, okay? But then if you set this to be true, right, there you go, it's going to ignore the buttons and it's going to look like this. So that's what we want. Then we just need to add an image in the middle and then we can just get that image uh, by going to toolbox, going to images, and then just going to, I don't know, banana. Man shocked at sight of... <laughs> image there you go amazing beautiful we gotta scale that obviously so let's set the size to be like 0 0.5 i guess beautiful let's uh <laughs> let's set it somewhere here amazing and then let's also have another text text label there we go text label let's also scale it to be like 0 0.5 by the way in case you don't know scaling just means it's gonna fit with the screen size so whenever i like you know like modify the screen it's going to scale and stretch itself along with the screen. But if we're not using scale and if we're using um, offset, offset is like based on pixels, meaning that with offset, it's going to look bigger on smaller devices and uh, smaller on bigger devices. I, I, I can just show you this right now and see if I just add like a frame or something, because by default, these things are using offset. So look at this frame, right? See, because it's using offset, it's not scaling with the screen, which obviously is bad. So yeah, text label. <laughs> Um, let's make it like so. Actually, for it, how do they do this? It's just one number? Yeah. Okay, a background transparency, one, so it's fully transparent. Let's make it bold. Let's make the text um, scaled, and let's make the text white as well. And then let's make the default text zero, I guess. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> okay, so now let's. We, all we need to do really is just detect whenever this image gets pressed. That's really all we gotta do right? Not spawn location. What am I doing? <laughs> Local script. Uh, let's see. How do we, can we detect whenever this thing has been clicked? Input began, connect function, which we get the input. So whenever the input begins, I assume this will only run when my mouse is inside of this image. Okay. So let's actually, let me just print, um, high. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. See, so I'm clicking in, it's printing high. If I'm clicking outside, it's not printing high. Now real quick, obviously we do also have to ensure that this input is an actual like mouse or a press from mobile right because i don't want because the things right now input began it works with any input right i just want the mouse or the touchpad so we can just say if um imp right which is this variable i don't even know what we need bro <laughs> user input type i guess is equal to enum user input type um mouse button one or if imp dot user input type is equal to enum dot user <laughs> user input type i don't even know what i'm doing anymore bro <laughs> Touch. A tap on the screen from a mobile device. Yes, there we go. Then what we do, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a variable, local counts, or no, let's call it local banana counts, okay? Just so just so we know what's actually going on here, okay? Set it to zero. I'm going to set banana counts plus equals one, meaning we're going to increase it by one. And then I'm going to set this text label text equal 
to the banana count, right? Which when we click, it's going to be one. So then it's going to set it equal to one. Then it's going to be two. Then it's going to set it equal to two. So then we're just going to say script.parent, which is the image label, dot parent, and the parent of the image label is the screen GUI. And then now that we have access to the screen GUI, right, then we can get the text label. So wait for child text label. Then we need to access its text property and then set that equal to banana count. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I think we're done. <laughs> if I click here, nothing happens. Beautiful. And a real quick thing as well, I think the last thing we also want to do is just to give the player like a random skin every three hours. Because that's what this game does, right? Every three hours, you get one of these skins. You get some like shining banana, you get some, I don't know, broken banana, galaxy banana, whatever. So like, I don't want to be making bananas like that, but basically we just need to make so that every single three hours, we can just print that the player has gotten some banana, okay? So we can just make a table, local, um, unique banana, okay? <laughs> or no, 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 let's do, um, banana collectible, okay? Like so. Make it a table, we can just say shiny banana, okay? Galaxy banana, I don't know, Earth's core banana. I don't even know what that means, it just sounds cool. And then I guess let's make a dark matter banana. I can actually let's make this diamond banana. I don't know. Shiny shiny banana sounds a little weird. And so yeah, then every let's say while task dot wait, and then it, it needs the seconds, which is like what? How much is three hours and seconds again? And then let's print the <laughs> banana collectible. Um, now the thing is, we do want to get a random item inside of this, and the way you can print something in a table is you can give it square brackets, and you could say one or two or three or four, and it's gonna give you the corresponding. Um, um, like, you know, value in the table. So if I do a banana collectible one, then this will give me a diamond banana. If I do a uh, banana collectible two, it's going to give me galaxy banana, or then it's going to give me earth score or dark matter. So I want to get a random number between one and four, right? So what we, what we can do is we can say math.random one, and then it could say four, but the thing is like, what if I want to change this list eventually? What if I want to add a banana or remove a banana? Well then, do I have to change this number? Like, how do I make it so that this maximum number is equal to the amount of items inside of this table? Well, I can just do hashtag banana collectible. Because this hashtag, um, when placed in front of a table, will just return the amount of items in this table. So this basically means four, right? Um, yeah. I guess to actually quickly test that this works, let's set it to one. Beautiful, okay. I don't even know what to say, bro. I need to monetize this somehow. Is this game even monetized? Items available for this game. I mean, yeah, okay, look, I know on the Steam market you can, like, sell items, right? Like, you can sell this banana. Yeah, like, 35 cents, but, like, apparently some people have been selling it for, like, $400 for some reason. You know what, bro? I'm making this game, okay? Publishing it to Roblox. <laughs> game settings. <laughs> what is it even called? Banana blocks. I don't know. For the description, uh, <laughs> what if I just copy this game? <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> bite blocks official all save yeah let's do this there, there you go there's your banana game and then i'll just probably fill up this game with like microtransactions or something now if you're amazed by the marvelous scripting that you just saw and you want to learn from me i do have my course in the description in the pinned comment and i'll also publish this game um as a link in the pinned comment as well so do go check that out and yeah so as always we're back to basics thank you for watching